my head is like my internet browser. There's 11 tabs going, and I don't know where that music's playing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to Coffee Milk. I'm Mark Laporte. And I'm Mitch DiPaolo. I got home from work. I was watching on Instagram one guy talking about ChatGPT, and he was talking about how he had it create. He just said, create an app or a game that doesn't exist. And then the whole ChatGPT came up with all the rules and everything. It was really cool. And they said, okay code now write the code for it and it just ran through all these lines of code and i saw that video my mind had figuratively exploded because i didn't i'm sure you told me this but i just it didn't register but i didn't know chat gpt could write code and that just it, it broke the matrix for me because i mean i, I got a degree in coding but I don't like it because I, I just hate it if you missed a semicolon or a period or just did any little thing wrong. The whole code yeah. didn't work. I didn't have the patience for that. So then I called you up and I, I was kind of mad at you for not pushing this harder on me because you just, you're very engrossed in this AI and I think it's yeah, amazing. I think bringing it's- bringing it up and you were like, uh, we should bring up some other stuff. I don't know. Well, I didn't want a, this podcast, A, to just be about AI and B, Anytime we would text back and forth, you would just text about AI, and I'm just trying to get you to think bigger. But then I didn't realize that this is this is the thing. I mean, in the late 90s, early 2000s, you had the dot-com bubble. Yeah. Every company just noticed that other companies that had a dot-com or went on the internet, their stock price dramatically jumped. It was insane, and that created a bubble and, and whatnot. And then, I don't know, it's really... It, it's cyclical with real estate, but in two thousand in the 2000s, we also had a crazy bubble for housing. Yeah, so but that's then, what I'm thinking. So then Bitcoin had its thing, and now it's becoming more mainstream. I mean, okay, so when Bitcoin came out, it was new, and I had heard about it. Kind of wanted to get in, but I, I just, it wasn't as easily accessible, and then I forgot about it because just life happens. What I mean by all this is that it took ChatGPT five days to hit one million users. It took Spotify five months. Apple and Instagram, um, several months, it says. But it's just that things are becoming adopted faster, and it's, it's really crazy. And if you could learn this, I mean, it's amazing. And now it can write code, or it could have written code all along, and I just, I, it, it didn't register with me. So we called you, and we're going to do the podcast on Friday. But then I said, do you just want to build something on Friday? Skip the podcast. Plus, it'd be great. I mean, see how long we could kind of get ChatGPT to create ChatGPT for us or DALI. And that's what I wanted to do. Yeah. All right. So I call you and tell you these things. Now, like, what are you thinking? I'm like, wow, Mark finally figured it out or I'm not crazy. When you, or first, when you first called, called me and said that ChatGPT can code and your mind was blown. I was like, oh my gosh, I have been telling this guy day after day that AI is amazing and it can do everything. Yes, but you didn't stress the code part. I mean, all I see, you go on Twitter or Instagram, it's like, ooh, 10 ways to, to get AI to write something useful for you. It's just copyright or blog writing or the pictures. But Well, if you have fooled around with any of the playgrounds online and you use the code model, you would see it writes code. Okay, didn't know about the playground part. It, it It's not, it wasn't, I didn't really care about it that much. I, I wanted to play around with it. I played around with Dolly and I played around with certain prompt generators, Jasper, all that stuff. But this was just on a whole other level. So I had asked you, I said, okay, instead of the podcast, do you just want to come over and see if we can build something? Yeah. The problem with that was, oh, you kept asking me a bunch of questions oh, as I'm trying to do something. I'm a question asker. I'm just, I just fire away sometimes. But I'm using chat GPT to ask the questions, and you're asking me the questions I'm literally asking the AI. It was just weird that you couldn't ask that. Yeah, it, yeah. But you just... And then I felt, and then I went home... <laughs> I was like, yeah, five o'clock. You was were just really dark. upset because I was like, well, that, what am I doing? I'm such an idiot. I don't know what I'm doing. So I was severely upset. I went home and then I figured out how to use ChatGPT to spit out the right code and tell, like, 
label each code snippet and tell me what each part of the code snippet does. Well, that was the thing because it took us. And then, yeah. It took I, us, what, 24 hours? Yeah, it took, it, yeah, in about 24 hours, you figured out how to get the interface up really quickly. And then I figured out how to get the image back from the API. That was the problem. We were in the end. And that was like right at the end of 24 hours, I would say. Well, that was the thing. At um, 5 o'clock, you leave. I'm trying to work on uh, a text generator. I just wanted ChatGPT to kind of copy itself where a user would put in an input and then it would produce the output and it would be displayed on the screen. Mm -hmm. But no matter how I worded it, I couldn't get the right code. So I kept yeah. on switching around between HTML and JavaScript or um, what's the other one? PHP. Uh, PHP or HTML or yeah. PHP and JavaScript. I just couldn't get it to display the results. I could see that it was it was putting stuff through because I could see the usage on the API that it was actually working, but it just wasn't displaying. Then the next day, I, I'd been working on it for 24 hours. We kept calling, you kept calling me on Friday and like, oh, did you get any further? I'm like, yeah, I got further, but <laughs> I'm not where I need it to be. I, I'm learning yeah. a lot more. And you were doing it, and I was kind of afraid because you kept on asking certain questions. I don't know what to do, or, or just, I'm worried about this. You were in this analysis paralysis that I didn't think you were going to get out of. Uh, yeah, I always get into that state where it's like, instead of just doing and trying to get it to work and just... Getting something. Yeah. I, I kind of, I worry about each aspect of how it works, and I'm like, well, if I put this here, is that bad? Is that not going to work? I don't, I don't like... I don't build and then test and then fix. I I I want to build it out perfect. and then I worry and then I like oh this isn't gonna work and then I don't do it and then yeah that was like the one time where I just kind of I'm gonna try and a get bunch you. of stuff together and it worked and it was amazing. That's what inspired me because you called me at 5:30. I had to take a break from this because the screen was just it oh, was yeah. killing my eyes. So 5:30, I kind of sit down. You texted me. You're like check the website now and i had checked and you added display the image although it was in the footer yeah it was amazing you would display the image and i kept telling you i said we're there there's just something missing when i kind of looked at your code i saw some differences i didn't change anything i just kept trying to get chat gpt to give me what i wanted yeah. and it took an hour so by 6 30 that's I what got it's all about it's about figuring out how to ask it to give you what you want. That's what I've been hearing from a lot of people. You you just have to keep asking it again and again, and it'll be like near what you want. And then you have to say, no, I want this version instead. And I want it to work like this. Yep. Like you have to be specific. If you want to create a program, yes. If you want to create a game, you have to label all the rules, how players yeah. move. If it's insane. If you don't give it a certain part, it won't put that in. Sometimes it will, and it will say, hey, don't forget this. And then you could say, add that, and then it'll add it in. So sometimes it will remind you to do things, and then you can just ask it to do it. It's it's amazing. I'm just so amazed by what we did because since the code wouldn't work, I kept on putting the code back into chat GPT. Seeing, I kept on asking, okay, what does this code do, or what is it supposed to do? it tell me exactly what I wanted it to do, but it still wasn't displaying. So I would just be like, okay, can you add something else, or do this, do that, and... Those prompts, man. What is that? Is that an eight, like a video video cable? <laughs> yeah, but Type C. What's a Type C? Type C. I don't know what Type, type C. Type C USB cable. Oh, that's just the uh, charger for my uh, yeah phone. Yeah, yeah. Type C. Oh, thank you. I didn't know what that was called. Yeah. You're the man. Are they putting that on laptops now? Uh, they're gonna be. They already are on Macs. So is USB 2.0 no longer a thing? And now, instead of having, you know, your phone charger, it's a regular USB that plugs into the brick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the end? Now they're having Type C's at the end in a Type C brick. So... Uh... This would be at one end of the iPhone charger. And then on the other end... Be... is a normal iPhone charger that that's... plugs into your phone. That's insane. So this plugs into the wall. I think I still got a, uh, what is it? It's so weird. I wonder when Apple is going to switch to all Type-C, if they will or not. I think it should be just mandatory. I'm, I'm sick and tired of having cords for every because, yeah. phone. It's... You know, what? Why? Uh, why? It's unnecessary. It's, it's totally unnecessary. I mean, uh, like, 
I don't know. Sorry. I, I just saw you plug in something, and I'm like, is that? That's a good point. Um, All this bullshit. And there's all different speeds for each cable. Like, some cables won't fast charge. Oh, yeah. No, that drives me nuts. I hate putting it on one at yep. work, and it's like five hours, 46 minutes. Yeah, yeah not this, doing that. This, this one will not. Look at how thick it is. <laughs> so have you done anything further with your um, AI art? Uh, no, but what I was going to say is how... How many users were you saying earlier for? Oh, five days. Five days for ChatGPT. One million users. Five days? Yeah. Oh, wow. So I don't know how many days MidJourney has been out, but that's at nine million members. Oh, wow. I don't know about users, but well, I would assume... that's just members. I would assume they came to their million probably after a couple of weeks. Yeah. I just want to say the five-day mark is the fastest. I could be completely wrong. So now, having said that, I have a list of different kind of apps or side hustles I want to create with this thing. I'm not ready to give them out yet. Okay. Because I don't know if I want to. I know I want to do at least two of them. But the others, it's just, it, it blows my mind. I also tried to make it do a uh, a puzzle game through HTML and JavaScript for a website. Did it work? I didn't actually put in the code because it just kept going, and then you know when it does so much, it kind of stalls. Yeah, and you got to type. Stops. You type you continue. Say, Keep going. Yeah, exactly. And then it kept <laughs> going, but it wasn't in that box. It was outside of the box, as if it were giving me instructions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like in normal text. So I was kind of. I I didn't know if that was gonna work, so I yeah. just stopped. But it, I, I would assume it would have probably gone for about five minutes. That's a good idea. So I want to see how that works, and I'll, I'll give you guys the yeah, results. Have, the, have a user upload the image. Exactly. and then But I wanted to see if I could have it store the image and share the image because there was a, a one puzzle website I saw. It was very well done. I'm kind of envious. And then you, that, have to, but you have to filter your, your well, image input and make sure no one is giving you anything malicious in the image. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. That's the part I'm also stuck on for making the website. Yeah, that would kind of make me a little paranoid. But and I think, you have to um, secure your API key. Right, but I'm sure somebody could probably tell you about it. Well, it's going to be down by the time the podcast is up. Okay, so ChatGPT is also teaching me that. <laughs> That's why I love this star thing. It's, you know when you, like Bluehost customer support, it kills me to have to deal with them now because oh, yeah. it's, just, it's a waiting game. Oh, and it is. It, before, it wasn't like that. I don't know. It had to have started within the last six months, but their customer support yep. is just... It, it's, they have all moved on to Blue Sky. What's Pro Sky? It's their uh, website uh, development like. Oh, no kidding. Con consultant. Oh, I didn't know that. Consulting, whatever. Because yeah. they just don't have tech support on customer support. Every time I ask it a question, it's like, oh, give me two to three minutes. But... This, you could ask it a crazy complex oh, yeah. question, and you just get that answer, and, and it's it amazing. it knows Bluehost, too. Like, it helped me do it on Bluehost. Like, oh. all this different Oh, no, you asked? You oh, asked. yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I still think we got to go through that, because when you were talking about Amazon being in the name oh, service. This is going to replace right. customer service, for sure. Yeah, I didn't even think all about that. All you need is a team. Whatever service you are providing, you need to hire a team to know how to fix any issues, work with the programming and whatnot and fix any code, help any people, and then you train the AI to do that and it'll do it. I just don't know where this is going to get us in five years. You were te you texted me that a couple days ago. You just said, this is crazy. And then I had said, oh, is it straight fire? Is it bussin'? <laughs> and you just text back yes. I thought that I was one of the know, funniest things. I didn't know what you were referring to, and it was late, and I was tired, and I was like, huh? I just thought it was funny. I was like, I'm upset. I'm like, <laughs> I was like, he's actually saying this right now? He's <laughs> saying this? I thought. I'm like, he's learned. I was like, did I do good? <laughs> <laughs> is it straight fire bussin'? <laughs> <laughs> is that what the kids use? I'm going to ask Chat GP2 with the new terminal. Oh, it, it only goes through 2021. It uh, might know it. 2021. <laughs> well, if you guys got anything new now, it, it doesn't know. But I want to start bringing back the classics. Yeah. Tubular and radical. Tubular. <laughs> Noticed how you started doing things and then immediately. You started learning things because you were just, oh, yeah. you were so focused on the API. I don't know what about the API, but you just kept asking questions about it. And I kept yeah. on telling you to ask ChatGPT. 
you didn't. Once I started asking it and and actually implementing what it was telling me to do and just trying it, once it worked, I would be like, holy shit. And then I would go back and I'd look at it and then it would start to make a little bit of sense. Even though I've never seen any of this before or worked with any code in my life ever. Right, but after a, after working with it for a few hours, you started to see kind of how it worked. You you could yeah. understand a lot of it. Yeah. Plus, I loved how it uh, noted everything, too. Yeah. It told you, well, this prompt is this. and But yeah, I was so proud when you called me at 530 and said to check the website. I was just so happy you had figured it out. And it was an hour <laughs> before me, which was mind-blowing, but... You telling me you had gotten it just gave me that extra push. Once I figured out that I got it set up correctly to where I could call the API from the website and the API was getting the usage. All you had to do was... And I could see the usage in the API menu. I, I was just like, I didn't stop after that. I just kept... I would get up. I would be like, oh, I got to take a break. And then I would just be back at my computer like the next minute, not even knowing it. Like, oh, shit, I'm doing it again. And then it, I finally got it to work. Yep. That's exactly what you did to me because I had just sat down and wanted to take a break, watch watch some mindless TV or something. But now you told me you got it. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to work the extra hour. But I noticed the code was so much shorter than mine uh, than what it spit out. Yeah, I don't know how I did that, but... But once I had asked it this last time, you saw in the, the JavaScript that it had three different inputs, and it never gave me those inputs before. It gave me the inputs in the code, but it just kind of didn't say, okay, here's three inputs. So I'm used to working with older code, and I just remember you had to kind of like declare the variable and the inputs and stuff, and I don't know. Having said that, I wanted to let you know that it's kind of, I guess, freaking out Google because I noticed that my website had tanked three days ago. Google just did another, yet another update. It is freaking out everything because it makes amazing content and it is also going to be built on top of search engines. Well, yeah. So Bing. there's going to be no more crawling through the SERPs. Yeah, there's so many memes about Bing coming back. And then it's like, oh, Bing is finally going to make a comeback. And then at the bottom it says, just kidding, nobody likes Bing. <laughs> well, yeah, my problem is I still can't get my in uh, my site indexed through Bing. I have no idea what's wrong. I have talked yeah, to... That's I have, why everyone hates Bing. It's probably. insane. Do, what do you have on customer support? Two guys and a dog? It's Probably. Yeah. I just... It took two weeks for him to give me a response saying that, cool. yeah, we, we created a, a request for you. I it's don't like, want anything to do with Bing. I just hate it. I hate Internet Explorer. I oh, hate, God. I hate Yahoo. I hate all of those. Wait, is it Explorer? Terrible. Edge. They have Edge now. Terrible to use. With Google, A, they just laid off 12,000 people today. Or maybe over the course of a couple of weeks. Oh, wow. But it's going nuts on Twitter. I'm wow. seeing people... They don't even know if they're laid off. They, they're they just kind of standing in line, swiping their ID badge, seeing oh if it turns God. red. So they green. didn't even get an email or anything. It was just like a Or they just didn't check cold, the email. Maybe that. They were just, they got an email that one night out of nowhere yep. that they were Sorry. just laid off. Yep. And they basically went into work hoping they weren't. <laughs> I think they said that's their largest wow. layoff in history. 12,000. And what? In Amazon? one night? I'm thinking so. Google access 12,000 jobs as layoffs spread across the tech sector. Having said that, they're also freaking out about ChatGPT and over the Everyone things is. every over the things we had discussed. And I mean, when you get yeah. 10 billion dollars uh, invested in ChatGPT by Microsoft and Bing, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, uh, you know, they're getting serious. But yeah, Google because has the investment is like it's capped or something where you can only earn so much. Okay, I didn't really look into that part. I'll have to check out. The whole deal. I was just, I don't know. I don't know why I brought that up. They invested one amount and then they invested more. I just forget what the other amount was. Hmm, probably another 10. But apparently Google's coming out with 20 different AI products this year. They're going to release a few of them at their next I IO event, oh, which is in May. Okay. Um, but I think they want to take on, they're going to come out with their own chatbot feature this year. Oh my and then unveil more than 20 projects powered by AI. But even um, the owners, Sergey Brin, Larry, uh, Larry, Larry Page, apparently, <clears throat> yeah, they're trying to shift Google in that direction as well. But I always thought they had AI. So much. That's AI. what they did, the, yeah. the algorithm. Yeah, it's just 
But I, it's just driving me nuts that Google's going through all this. I feel uh, like they have been. It's just now coming out of the woodwork and it's finally working. Well, and now I'm paying attention to it because I'm noticing the ser SERPs change in, on my website. I'm noticing less traffic overnight. They just practically shut me down. I could have a few hundred people and now it's down to four. Yeah, I feel like sites, like just content sites on general topics and whatnot are just, I, I, I don't know. I feel like they're going to, they're not going to perform as well. Like, that's what kind of scares me. Do I keep going with content or is it just going to be phased out in the next five years and AI is just going to replace I, everything? I think it's going to be, it's going to be definitely hit a lot. That's it's going to be, it's going to take a big hit. Because I'm thinking about, oh, just... unless you have a website like specifically dedicated to something and it really provides value to a group of specific users. Well, I'd, I'd think like YouTube or something, the videos wouldn't change. No, you everyone wants videos. to watch YouTube. Um, you always want to learn something that you need to see it done. Unless AI can do that, like how do I mount a TV to a wall and make sure it's level? I mean, you're going to want to see a guy do it unless AI can perform that task in a video. It possibly could in five years with what it's doing now. Oh my gosh, it definitely could. You could probably take a picture of the wall you want to mount it on, and then it'll give you a 3D render yep. of it'll how scan to the mount wall. the TV based on your TV model oh, yes. and what mounting hardware works with it. All it has to do is scan the directions. And then just and leave you links to And then someone Amazon. has to tweak it and, and something. And Oh, have you heard of the lawsuit that... Which lawsuit? The lawsuit for the image generation. Oh, uh, the site you were telling me about, Midjourney, and there was another one. Yes, uh, Midjourney. Stable Diffusion. Midjourney, Stable Diffusion, and what else? Deviant Art. Okay, so... And it was crazy because the first podcast, you literally talked about this very thing. You said, it's just scraping any artist. So if you create art, chances are it scraped your stuff. Oh, yeah. It can yeah. do it in your art stuff. So it's all about how it scrapes it, though. It violated the rights of millions of artists by using billions of internet images to train its AI tool without the consent of artists. And we were talking so, about their consent. So I don't get it because... Say you watch Bob Ross paint, right? Doesn't he do painting tutorials? Oh, yeah. So paint say you class. watch Bob Ross paint, and you go after watching Bob Ross paint and a bunch of other people paint and going to a bunch of art museums and looking at the paint and how it's painted and what they use to paint it. And then you go home and you make your own paint, your own painting, <laughs> based on the technique, the techniques you saw, what you liked, what you didn't like, Maybe you're changing the technique a little bit. So wouldn't that be like, oh, how is that copyright infringement? It's not. It's not. I agree. I think this. And that's how the AI works. I mean, you can sue about anything. You can put a lawsuit out. I mean, any lawyer will take any lawsuit. Well, most lawyers will take any yeah, lawsuit. Yeah. Um, so you can sue anybody. Now, I don't know how they can actually win this case. But I know this case will set precedent for. I think for, this is yeah for sure. This is this is definitely a good thing, because you're right. If a human does it, I just hope it goes the right way. See, it's a complicated matter of evaluating both the inputs and the outputs. It's really up to the user. It can't be up to the AI because it's not like the AI. It's just doing what it's told. It's doing its job. Humans paint things. They copy styles. They paint in that style. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep we'll already this. do that in Photoshop. So I think that yeah, this lawsuit true. might uh, maybe give people compensation for having their images be used to train. <laughs> at at, at, le at most, maybe I don't know. I assume this thing will settle out of court. It's got to do something. They'd probably just settle out of court. Yeah, here's some money. But I would I would actually like to see this thing go so, through because I'd like to know. We have computers basically simulating what humans can do in writing and uh, drawing and mm -hmm. whatnot. So, and you said music. I still haven't tried yeah, the music too. one. I, I, haven't, with that. I haven't tried that. Either. What if we made our intro of oh, the AI we thing? We could do that. We could try that. Okay. Do you know of any uh, good? Uh, oh, music? yeah. Just go to uh, uh, Pharma. Pharma Psychotic. It's so. P H A R M A. Psychotic. P S. I know. <laughs> something. AI tools, AI AI gener generative art tools. But it has one for go down music. and it'll go to music. Yeah, such a weird name, but wow, I don't. I oh, just okay, came I across it one day and I was like, wow, this is a massive list of all relevant tools. 
Oh, wow. It's updated too. That's pharmapsychotic.com, P-H-A-R-M-A, psychotic.com. I would check this out if you're listening to this. Oh, my word. It has everything. Oh, yeah. Oh, bookmarked. Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. We're using all of this AI stuff. Elon Musk is over here decoding brain signals for body movement, I think. Neuralink. Yeah, with Neuralink. He's like decoding the signals with AI. It's like we've never been able to decode the signals before because there are like so many and, and it's very complicated. I don't really know how it works, but I guess they're using AI in the processing power of that technology to do it. And now we're figuring out how brains work and we're able to emulate the input into the brain so then you can make a leg move or an arm move or whatnot. So much do you know about this neural life? So it takes the input from the brain and passes it. Say you have a a break in your, what, your, is it your spinal cord that can make you paralyzed? Your yeah. legs not moving yeah, or something? Yep. You could just bridge that gap by getting the input from the brain or the end of the spinal cord that is broken and then bridge the gap over to the other end. Think about people who had a stroke and... Yeah, maybe- that too. You get that part of the brain to work yes. again. I don't know. I think over time. But yeah, if they're doing it now and they're, it's successful on animals, like <laughs> it's going to happen. Oh, 100%. It's definitely in people already, but, but they're probably just not talking about it. If I had a uh, traumatic brain I bet you there's someone out there who just oh. doesn't give a shit and wants to try it. Oh, absolutely. Is, there's people who are like, terminal and stuff. Yeah, they try yeah. them. Or I bet you there's probably one like enthusiast out there who's like, yeah, put me, in the, put me on the table. <laughs> there, there was one guy who kind of did his own genetic manipulation with um I with, watched uh, vaccine that documentary. stuff and then he just yes. stabs himself Oh on. my gosh. What? The CRISPR gene mutation. Yes. Yes. And they did a whole documentary on it and they were showing how you can get the genes from fire fireflies that make them glow. And what yeah. glow? Genes from the specific gene code from fireflies that make you that make them glow in the night. Right, cut that out. Then I don't know what they do. They mess with it a little bit, turn it into a gene that will work with another animal, and then make a oh, hybrid animal like an spider animal cow. glow, like a, a rat glow or a dog glow. Oh, yeah. There are pictures of dogs oh, glowing yeah. like fireflies oh, yeah. on the internet. It is insane. It's, it's scary. scary. I, I like- and you can have kits to do this shipped to your door. That's the whole thing about the documentary. It's about people doing it in their garage. Just need a couple hundred thousand dollars. You buy some equipment. and I don't even think well, it's a couple hundred thousand dollars. I would assume some of the equipment they have. No, I, I don't know what equipment no, costs. It's not crazy to do. You just need a freezer. and you need a, <laughs> They're not even doing it on a clean area. It's like this guy's doing it on a workbench in his, in his <laughs> shed. In his shed. Move the drill press over, honey. I got to <laughs> extract this gene. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No thanks. Yeah, I'm all set with that. scary. Uh, I wouldn't it's test scary. that stuff on myself. I, I don't have the the faith in my ability I, I don't either. to mutate genes. No. That's why I play with metal. And websites. Yeah, like and, how do you tell like how do you tell if you, you, you mutated did it, right. it right? Yeah, if you did it right. I mean I guess if the animal's glowing after, you're doing it right. That's when so, going to college is a good thing. Yeah. That's what you go to college. They for. say it takes years of practice and the people who are doing this like like really understand it, it's but just, I don't know. That's just you got some I crazy mean, doctor out there. Who, no, no, this is like normal people in their shed doing it as a hobby. Yeah, but you know, if there's a normal oh, person, there's, there's a always a, yes, yeah, like, so there's always a crazy doctor. Yeah, going to do wants it. to try. Yeah, yeah. no, G- yeah. So Elon Musk has a company. It's called Neuralink. Uh-huh. He's working on developing a brain computer interface. Is it it? So headset or is so it? So this is what ChatGPT describes as Neuralink. The technology involves implantable devices that can be surgically placed in the brain, which can then communicate with the computer to allow individuals to control devices with their thoughts or to enhance cognitive abilities. Oh, gosh. The goal of the technology is to help people with disabilities or injuries, okay, such as paralysis to regain control of their limbs, and to help healthy people to enhance their cognitive abilities. So, yeah, like you said, like if someone has dementia. The company has developed a prototype device that has been successfully tested on animals and is currently working on human trials. Oh, gosh, so they are. Oh, absolutely. Oh, gosh. Well, again, I mean, if you're brain damaged, yeah, I'll try it. It's not widely available yet. Oh, no. I remember reading about this a few years ago. People in working 
Good for them. Yeah, I think I heard a while ago how it's in a person and I it's working. I didn't think about dimension. And the, the way they put it in is supposedly pretty easy, too. Yeah. Um, okay, if you could if you could get... It's really thin wires, apparently, and they just stick into parts of no, the brain. Oh, it freaks me out. People. It freaks me out. I'll never get one of these things, but I think they're sick. Yeah. If you could get Would that get con. Yeah, yeah I, I don't know. No, you're not in plan. Maybe again. if, like, I'm about to die or something and I don't care anymore, yeah. Yeah, we'll give it a shot, but... <laughs> it's like you just turn into Superman and overnight. <laughs> Maybe at the end of my life I try that. Listen, Agave, I was just... Sometimes I feel like we're regressing as a society. Just old things become new again and they become wonders. So I saw two guys on something. I don't know okay. if it was YouTube. One kid said, did you... No, you could get anybody's phone number. And I'm like, okay, go on. He said, look, it's this thing called whitepages.com. <laughs> you type in somebody's name and you get their phone number. Whoa. Oh, God. And I'm thinking to myself, you guys have discovered the white pages. It's one years late. I mean, the white pages have always been a thing. It's a big phone book that came with the yellow pages. There were two books that you had. They'd just be left on your doorstep once a year. You know, updated big, large books. The yellow pages told you the numbers of businesses in, in the state, and the white pages told you numbers of people in the state. It just kind of boggles my mind that you don't know about that. Are you Googling this right now? Yes. The white pages? What's going I've on? I've never been on the white pages. Yes, but, I, you know, it, it's great that how it's on the internet, but the white pages have just don't always... know about it. It's always been a thing, and you guys are just now discovering this. It's like... Bell bottoms are going to come around again. Everybody's going to think it's this new wild thing. Nope, been around since the 70s. Because I remember they kind of came back in the 90s. Or it was really the Jenko jeans. My buddy had just a crazy pair. Sorry. So you, are, you, are you trying to find numbers on the white pages? Yeah, I'm trying to find you. Well, you're not going to find me because the only I have a cell phone. And the white pages don't have cell phones. It was just landlines. Oh, okay. Yeah, I see. I mean, maybe they actually have the cell phone. I don't think they do, but that's what the white pages was. It was just for landlines. No, Rhode Island. Okay, so you don't know about the white. Well, the white pages are a thing. There, there you go. There you go. Have you heard about Saudi Arabia's cities? Yes. They want to build in the desert. City. Glass, glass mile long cities. Miles long. 75 miles long. And they. They are planning on like having a bunch of stuff with like crypto transactions and whatnot inside. I'm hearing like, to get on the train. And that's the thing that amazes you. They're building a 75 mile long city that's oh, straight no, uh, the desert. Honestly, uh, crypto it's, doesn't it's like even a like a fever dream. It's like a fever dream. It's like a glass wall in the desert. Like how? Uh, how? How? Uh, they're building it right now. Have you seen? Yeah, they have footage of it. But it really, they have the glass walls up already. Oh no, no, they just uh, laid out. Uh, in the dirt. How wide is it going to be? Like, do you think that is really going to... How many people are they going to house? Let's... Nine million. Nine million what? They're planning on having nine million people housed in this glass city. And I'm looking at a picture right now of the concept. And it's like two glass walls. Oh, it's... it's... So they're making two. And you can go in between them? How is it going to stay up? Oh, well, that's for the engineers. Like, so, what? Oh, I agree. This is kind of a wild concept. And when I heard about it, it's like, I didn't realize it was kind of a reality that quickly. I thought this was going to be a fever dream for maybe a decade. And then they oh start. Oh, my now goodness. Now. It's two glass walls, and the inside of it is going to be all trees and oh, yeah. walkways. Oh, that's beautiful. That would be really cool. A train going that right is, through it. That is, um, oh, they're having, like, multiple levels in the ground, too, for trains and subways, right? Oh, yeah, probably have ever, all that stuff on oh, the yeah. ground. I mean, wow. that makes sense. 1,600 uh, that, feet tall. That's going to be hard to do. Oh, if anybody that happens, do it. I will definitely visit that one day. They have the money to do it, I'll tell you that much. That will be on my bucket list. Well, what they wanted to do was have um, vertical farming along the walls on the inside. Oh, awesome. And then farming. it was going to be a subscription service for meals. Like you pay a subscription fee monthly for three, for three meals. I wonder if you're going to pay in crypto. Probably. We'll just say, yes, you're going to pay in crypto. There you go. And you so. own a yacht and park it at the end. What? I don't know. Oh. That's just a concept image, but over here. 
see, it's just beautiful. But what if you get a strong mm-hmm. wind or something like? Yeah. How is that gonna hold? Uh, because it's just it's a seventy five mile. Wall. It looks just... like this is generated by AI. Like it looks like these images are just yeah, probably an AI fever dream. Probably. Oh, speaking of which, that's one thing I want to talk. I've been reading the Bible lately, but I'm on Exodus, and there's these parts in Exodus that just really go into detail about the Ark of the Covenant, how it's to be built, that the um, tent for the Ark of the Covenant, and all this other stuff. It's so detailed. Like, this will be made of acacia wood, 12 cubits long by 3 cubits high and stuff. I want to take all of those instructions, and I want to run it through the AI generator because I want to see what it comes up with. And my, my cousin used it last night, but... He used some... For building what again? Just an image of what... No, for building what? The Ark of the Covenant. The Ark? That holds the Ten Commandments? Bud, how did you confirm? (laughs) Amen to that. (laughs) Yes, it's called the... I was taking the test for confirmation, and Mrs. was actually helping all of us pass in the room. We were, we were we all had no clue what to answer. I took that test last Just walking around and pointing. I took that to test it. last year. What to circle? Or I, I gave it to my students. Yeah, that's the Ark of the Covenant. Oh, okay. That's what it looks like. So they have specific directions of oh. size. Everything in the, yes. I mean everything down to the the handles, down to the gold rings, oh, wow. down to what the priest had to wear. It's very detailed. And I was like, wow, if I could just copy all that and put it in a dolly. I wonder what kind of image yeah. come up. Sorry, I also wanted to tell you that while we're... I didn't mean to do it on the pod, but I'm yeah, going to tell you that. So that after this, we can do that because I wanted you to copy and paste. Yeah. And I just thought that was pretty wild. I want to see what other images we could do. Last video I saw freaked me out. It was an a, a, a guy on Twitter, I believe, created an artificial uh, program that would take any Instagram photo of you, search through any open camera. Oh my gosh, you read my mind. And find you. Yeah, I was gonna talk about it, but I forgot what it was called. I was looking this up while I was in uh while I was on vacation. It damn near made me puke. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Hundred percent. Because it was oh yeah. A guy in a blue hoodie and a guy in a white hoodie and they were walking down the street and this thing pinpointed them in note. Oh yeah. It showed them the There's video. public cameras ever. I ever. Just, well, this was in London, and there's just, Even there's, access. it's insane. Oh, there's yeah. public yeah, cameras. Yeah, are. But, uh, yeah, no thanks, not ready for that. Mm, I don't no, want me to know neither. Me neither. If that becomes a thing, yeah, I'm going off grid. I'm just going to go live in Maine yeah, in please. a cabin. I'm going dark. Right on the ocean. That's freaky. That was a movie I saw. I can't remember if it was a Tom Hanks movie where he played this um, kind of like Steve Jobs type personality. They created a company. In the movie, it was somehow they had asked their users to find somebody and see how long it took the users to find this one person. Okay. And it would come down to minutes. Wow. And it kind of freaked me out. And then one time at the end, spoiler alert, well, I don't even know the name of the movie, so it can't be a spoiler. But at the end, they were going after this guy who was innocent, and they had found him in minutes, and I think they all beat him or something. Or I remember it was just like, it, it freaked me out at, at how fast technology was advancing and how crazy people can become. Knowledge is harder to come by today. I think knowledge is easier to come by. People are just lazier to do it. Yes, but you get so much that you have you become so overwhelmed. Many, you have Yeah, I become overwhelmed for sure because it's like you, you look up how to do something and then you you get how to do it in eight different ways. And then you also have 10 different things that you need to worry about and make sure are correct. But it's a different way of doing it in each way. It's 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 just, it's a flood of information and you have to sift through what is right, what is wrong, and then what is the way that works for you after you sift through what is right and what is wrong. That's a good point. That could be the problem. That Just the overwhelming amount of information. There's this meme It said, um, yeah. my head is like the in- my internet browser. There's 11 tabs going, and I don't know where that music's playing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's, I mean, when I start looking up something, like we did last week, you saw I, I had problem 20 tabs. AI open. is going to solve. Yep. It's, it's, I hope so. Oh, uh, yeah. It seemed like AI made me open those tabs right. because I had to keep Googling more stuff. Here's the thing. When you have your information um, being given to you from one source, and think think about it, you're just, you, you, you have something you want to learn, you go to this box, you type it in, and it will tell you all about it. So that's pretty trained. So there is, it is a lot easier 
to manipulate this information and have biases in it. We didn't record the part earlier, but we were saying that he, uh, Mitch was talking about how the world's just getting, you know, rich is getting rich or the poor is getting yeah. poor. And I said, that's because the rich make their money work for them and the poor work for their money. We do eight hours a day, 40 hours a week. There's there's so much more time that you could somehow be making more money. You just don't. The information's out there for you to do it. Yeah. It's all about there's so much information about different ways that you can do it that you get over so much of do it, anything. So much of it is is deemed unworthy that you have to like sift through information for hours and you have to you have to try things and you have to Oh yeah. I mean you, you go have and to fail you go over and over again. That's it. You also have to fail. I mean, that's how we learned a hundred ways not to make the API work last week. We failed a hundred times, and then on the hundred and first, mine on the hundred and twentieth, we got it. Yeah, it's as long as you're learning. I forgot what I was gonna say. It was a good one. Oh, so again, I keep we keep on harping on this that if you can't make money in today's day, there's something wrong with you because there's a billion ways. What I saw on Fiverr the other day was a professional listener. It was a professional listener. I think he charged 45 or $50 an hour. Yeah. And he transcribes what he listens to? No. Okay. People call him up and they just talk and he listens. Maybe give some feedback if they want feedback, but mostly it's just so people could vent. Oh, man. Well, that's what I assume. I mean, I didn't. They just okay. raved yeah. at him. Yeah, awesome. A professional listener. 50 bucks an hour. You just listen to people then. So I don't think so. so. It's kind of like the scene in the movie where you have the mom in the kitchen on the phone with the cord and she's walking around and she's like, Yup, okay, no way. Oh, he yeah. did that. <laughs> so, like, you just have to do that for an hour and you get paid 40, 50 bucks. Yep. Well, this guy did, I think. I could do that. I think 600 times. I should give it a shot. Professional listener. You could get, I mean, obviously, that's what a therapist is. Yeah. <laughs> but you could. Like, uh, like you could just to a friend. Put a Fiverr gig out there. Professional listener. Everybody else kind of combined it with life coaching, but, I mean, I don't. I'll help you out, but I'm no life coach. I don't even know what I want to do in my life. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what I want to do when I get older. It's hard for me to make decisions on my own. <laughs> well, that's why I want, I'm just trying to get you to try everything. Coach you. Exactly. Exactly. But I've tried a lot of stuff. Yeah. I'm trying to get you to try a whole bunch of stuff. So that's why we got the podcast. All right. But another one was rent yourself out as a friend. <laughs> another side hustle. Well, yes. People get paid to be friends with others. Wow. It's uh, They'll hire you for events or other activities. I'm sure those are for the beautiful people. But I, I don't know. Going to a party? That's insane. Then there's the classic... Uh, Black Friday, there would always be people waiting in line, or back in the day, you had to wait in line for tickets, so you'd hire somebody to stand in line for you. Oh, I've heard of that before. And you just, you know, yeah. 20 bucks an hour. A uh, line placeholder. Yes, exactly. And then there was this thing in Japan or China, professional cuddler. Oh, yep, heard of that one. I think I heard of that one on YouTube a while ago. I just, I don't, <laughs> mind blown, again. These are all things I saw. I one a while ago. I'm just trying to remember. It was just like that one. So if you have an out idea and you think it's stupid, I say do it anyway because there are people who are a professional cuddler. So I don't think it gets any crazier than that. And that yeah. lady who sold yeah, air. That's a good point. For $100 a jar. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I've, I've been hearing that more and more. What, um, people are selling that, air? Yeah, from different places. <laughs> and just shipping it to China and... All different uh, parts of the world that don't have clean air. It, it's 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 yeah. because we talked about it on the first podcast, and everybody. I mean, it's the most downloaded podcast ever. Should Episode one of Coffee Milk. No, we're not gonna. Oh. Actually, you know what? I don't air is very it. nice. Like I would sell air. I'd go down to Newport Beach. No, I'd like to see if it's you could like, make money from selling air. Yeah, if I could make a penny, penny. If I could make a penny a jar, just like break even. Well, I don't want to break even. I mean, that's. I got to drive down to Newport. That's like an hour, okay. man. Yeah, so you break even, you pay for the gas. You got to drive over the bridge. But you got to think about it. We can't be profiting off these people who just want a fresh whiff of air. If they want to buy a jar of air, I mean, 
you got to make a profit. What's the for me to go to Newport? I mean, yeah, I, like you're a asking, dollar. I'll make a dollar profit. A dollar. Yeah. What's a jar cost? It's like a dollar eighty-five. You're gonna sell them for two fifty. I'm saying a dollar profit. I'm not making a dollar profit if I'm driving to Newport. I'll drive to Newport and make a dollar profit. I. All right. When do you want to do that? We should do it soon. Drive to Newport. We'll do it next weekend. Okay. Next weekend, drive to Newport. I I'll can grab go to, a... Wait, I can go to my friend's house in Narragansett. It's got to be Newport. Because Newport's where all the mansions are and everything. If anybody knows about Rhode Island, they just know about okay. Newport or they think it's in New York. Okay. So I say next week, we definitely go down to Newport. We get the two sizes of mason jars. Yes. But I don't know that we actually fill up all of them because it might take a while to sell 24 jars of air. Yeah. And so we'll get like, we'll get 10 jars and five of each size. How is Or that? 10 of each. Okay. Size. Well, I say we still buy them because you, you buy them keep in the them box. It's cheap. Keep them close. Keep the air fresh. Well, that's what I'm saying. Wouldn't you want to get like fresh, fresh air? Okay. So yeah, maybe we only well, almost so many to, yeah. to say that it, it's Insane. fresh. Was, yeah, exactly. We say we have three on hand, three of each size. And then depending on that, depends on how many times we go down to Newport. But now, what are we thinking for domain names? Okay. So domain names. Um, I'm thinking how a lot of people are putting a spin on the AI text generation websites. Like they have names like writer, R Y T E R. Oh, you like that misspelling stuff? Yeah. Really? Well, that won't rank well. No, it it might as long as you're good at SEO on the inside. I I don't think it generally true. But I think when people everything else could outweigh that. Think of um, writer. They think the normal spelling. Uh, yeah, for uh, sure. Okay. So what if you did? Well, I'm thinking said, breath of fresh air. Like that's what I'm thinking. Uh, um. Well, freshair.com is uh, taken. Okay. Breath so, of Fresh Air is com- is taken. Well, we are trying to make a website that will sell cans of fresh air. Mason jars. People, so it's glass. Areas um, without fresh air. So what should we name our website? We need creative names for the website that will be like a breath of fresh air or a whiff of fresh air. Something like that. That will be creative and interesting. All right. He's asking. Chat GPT to come up with names. I just gave a bunch of words. That's not a bad idea. I'm gonna try. Freshaircan.com, breatheeasy.com, cleanairco.com, clearbreeze.com. Oh yeah, Newport Air. We could name it Newport Air. We're doing it in Newport. Newport Air's gotta be yeah. No, that's breath. Breath of Newport. Um, what's we need other names for smelling something? Synonyms for shit. Breath of Newport's available synonyms sin how do you spell synonym s y n o synonyms for the word smelling or whiffing something breath of newport i think we might i think we might buy breath of newport inhaling sniffing scenting nosing detecting sampling sample you don't like breath of newport aroma newport aroma that's got to be taken newport aroma breathe newport Okay, okay, I'm sorry. You got, we're going to write these down because you're killing me. Oh, I can, we got start, Breath writing. Of Newport. I can start writing in the docs. All right, we got Breath of Newport, and that's not taken. You have Newport Aroma, that's not taken. Okay, that's a good one, too. Newport. I really like Breath of Newport. Newport Aromas. Newport, Newport Aromas of, I don't know. No, no, breath, keep going, breath keep of going. Newport, I, agree. I love the, I think this is actually interesting. We're, we're thinking about this on the podcast. Breath of Newport, I, I'm... I'm thinking of sticking with that. I'll buy that thing right now, and I'll create that website today. I'll have AI see if they can come up with a, a template or I something. We'll go get the air every week. That's what I'm saying. You don't have to worry about it. <laughs> drive down. Good, because I don't want to go to New. Because I don't mind driving. Yeah, and, that's wild tonight. And that's awesome. See, like if I can drive and make money driving, getting air, getting it, coming back. It just sounds so crazy, but I want. I will go get that. Air. I want to prove that this can be done. You can just make money doing. It. That's what we should do. We every couple okay. of weeks we so should come up with I something. Think, I think we need to sell this air within at least two to three months. Oh God, okay. you want to give it that long? I'm thinking ten days. Oh, whatever. I don't care because as long it's as this take... works. I'm setting time frames where I know it can work. Okay, now do you put something else in the jar or is it just air? Like I'm not sure if we, we put a little sell the a bundle. 
We could sell sand and rocks too. A like, small amount of sand and rocks in a smaller jar, along with a bigger jar. I mean, you might want to sift it because Scott only knows what's out on the beach. Is that legal, shipping sand uh, across borders? Air's got to be fine because there's nothing in the jar. I mean, if you sell it. Maybe we should just do air because don't they get worried about customs and everything? You can't bring over fruit. You can't bring over. Massachusetts, yeah, they can't bring over wood if you bring yeah, a cup. Exactly. Wood, yeah, exactly. Like, so I think air, we should just do air. Okay. So just do air. That, that's a good and idea. Even if we, I'm, I'm saying, so after we figure out how to make it work, I'm going to figure out how to can it, like high pressurized so you can get multiple breaths. Well, I think you're going to. But if it doesn't smell fresh, then it's not worth it. We need to, that's the thing. We need to keep it fresh, but also pressurize it so you can get a few fresh breaths. Why, you want to get a pressure cooker now? No. Like something to pressurize small cans, like a Lysol can, how that would look. Something like that. Oh, you want it to be like an, I don't want it to be an aerosol. I want Not to... an aerosol, but just... in that type of can where you can have multiple sprays. No, I just want it in the mason jar. Yeah, but these people are paying... What, 15 to $25 for a can of air, and they're getting one to two sniffs. So well, why, why just... wouldn't you want to buy something for around the same price that you can get multiple breaths from? See, I think you're th- it's it's I'm like that ex-girlfriend shirt. value. No, I think it's like the ex-girlfriend shirt. You know, you break up or something, and you have a piece of your ex's clothing, and it smells like them. And then, you know, while you're going through the breakup, some people just like the scent to bring them back to a simpler time where you find that shirt like three months later, how it still has that scent. That's what I mean. In Newport Air, if you're right by the beach, you're going to get that salt water and you're going to smell that for a while. It's not going to be like three or four breaths. Like it's going to be kind of in there as long as we uh, run around for a while and then kind of just leave it open. If it works, we're going to do pressurized air too. And we're going to see how that sells. I think aerosol, like... No, it's not going to be an aerosol. Well, like just CO2. It's just going to be It's going to be a can of compressed air. Right. You know how you make an air, right, like air like cannon? The, yeah, or yeah. the... Pss, for this thing. Yeah, there's going to be no liquid in the can. It's just air. Not that high of pressure, just enough to get a few pulls of the trigger. That's interesting. But I, 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 I don't know. That's kind of interesting. Like, think about... Yeah, but it's... Okay. okay. So I... So it's have, perfume without the perfume. I have made... DIY scuba tanks out of soda bottles. You get the you get the valve from the tire of a bicycle. Okay. Cut that out, put it in the cap of the bottle, glue it in, make sure it doesn't leak. Then you can pump up the bottle to about sixty to fifty psi without it blowing up. And then you strap it to I strapped it to my leg because it was easy, or my back, and then you, you hook up um an output to it, get a little pressure regulator, and then a valve. And some tubing, and you just put it in your mouth, and you go in the pool, and you got like, you got like five to eight extra breaths. Yeah, what, air. you're like a little MacGyver. It, it's amazing. I made it so I I did it with huge soda bottles and whatnot, and then I eventually made it so big to the point where it started making me float. <laughs> so I had to put weights next to it and tape it down. I love. I, I don't understand why you don't try and create something like play with the. What are those little Ar- Arduino boards or oh, Arduino? Oh, yeah, or... like Raspberry Pi. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Like yeah, I, I've thought about doing that. Oh, you, you like the electric skateboards? You like? Oh, that was so fun. I mean, I don't know. You could totally if I could make a company building electric skateboards, that would be uh, that would be amazing. Yeah, that's something I'll definitely do one day if I have money money to just like start. I like that. Business doing something. Yeah, you get there. What do you think, New Aroma or Newport? Uh, a breath of Newport, whatever. Oh. Inhale Newport. <laughs> that sounds... That's sounds... like the cigarettes. Yeah, exactly. All right, so you think it's just between those two? What else did they have? So, clearbreeze.com. No. Can of fresh air. No. You can do jar of Newport. Mm. Jar of Newport. Jaro Newport. No. Again, still sounds like the... Fresh air. I don't know. Hang on, I think we lost... I think we lost... I think it's between... Newport or Roma? I think we already hit it. Newport. Um, yeah. But there's a TV show, and they have this word, apothecary. Apothecary. Yeah, you've never heard it. This is an amazing idea. If this works, it's going to blow my mind. Yeah, that's that's the whole fun of this, just seeing what works and what doesn't. But this is just one of those really stupid ideas that it just might succeed. Yeah. And be crazy successful. (laughs) I mean, not crazy. 
if so, you sell a couple a month, you're doing well. I'm thinking here. So we're going to sell it on the website? Well, yeah, they place an order on the website. Okay. And okay. Depending so on how, should like, we also sell it on eBay and uh, stuff like that, like eBay? Should be like a breath of fresh air. Yeah. I never thought of that. Okay, so go to like eBay other, and do uh, Etsy, too. Yeah, everything. And also link back to our website. Holy crap. So, yeah. Let's just find out who is selling breath. Does someone has to be selling fresh air jars on eBay. Figure out what they're doing, what's working, what posts they're selling. Go there, make your own posts, make it look better because we got that good air over here. We got that good air over in Rhode Island. Yeah. <laughs> well, Newport, definitely. We can get the low tide scent. We can get the high tide scent with the more fresh air. The thing is, I don't, I, that low tide scent stank, though. It's been a long time since I've been to Newport, maybe 20 years. You could even do it in front of the mansions. Oh, man. Like, go in front of the breakers. Oh, man. This is Newport oh, Air in man. front of the breakers. I'm seeing it all. Yep. We could have a map. We could have a map. Yep. We could have a map. And you just click on the map. You just pick the location you want. garden. <laughs> I think this is fantastic. I'm going to create um, this. Yep. Okay, so what I want yep. you to do is text. Yeah, Google Maps API. Well, can, yes. We don't even need that. We just need a picture of it. Yeah, exactly. And then like four dots or five dots. Yep. Whichever man. Photoshop. You want. Now, text your mom and ask her what she likes better. Be like, Breath of Newport or Newport Aroma? Ask her. Because I'm going to ask my sister and uh, mother right now. Okay. And we'll get back and we'll tell you what they say. I asked my mom, sister, friend, two aunts, and uh, uh, cousin. And it's unanimous. What do you think? Breath of Newport or Newport Aroma. They all said the same thing. They all said the same thing. Did you tell them what we're doing? No, I just gave them the two options. I just said Breath of Newport. Newport Aroma. It's Breath, Breath of Newport. Breath of Newport. Okay, yeah. So I'm going to buy that right now. Yep, I, I agree. I, I like both. I, I I. When you came up with Breath of Newport, see, you're really good at coming up with names. You came I really up with that's names. so simple, though. That's the best. Breath of crime. Fresh Air, substitute Fresh Air for Newport. Yeah. Breath of Newport. I just have Breath of Newport. Somebody else, you can so, have Newport Aroma. About, Rhode Island. what, two weeks we'll be selling air? Two weeks? Where when should I go get the air? I don't know, but I think we're going to be live within less than 24 hours. We're going to be live. Because oh, I'm buying this yeah, right now. Set that up. I'm adding like this maniac. up. Yes. I will totally have this. You are a internet maniac. Oh, I, I really love buying domains. It's a, it's a sickness. You, I you just love setting up websites. I really do. That's my just like, yes, let's go. Another one. Yet I feel really bad because I had promised my sister I'd want my sister a domain. Oh, I told gosh. her I was going to set it up. This was probably during my birthday. Yeah, so, I do that sometimes. And then I just kind of put it by the wayside because work got busy. Everything kind of got busy and life happened. Now I'm doing all this other stuff and I feel bad I haven't done hers. So I'll create hers today. Sorry, Nicole. Love you. Breath of Newport. We just need someone to try our air and rave about our air. It's it's just going to be good. How how can you screw up air? I don't know, but now that you say that, I'm somehow we're going to find a way to screw <laughs> it out of mess it up. <laughs> All right, so I'm buying it right now for one year because I'm just going to test this out for a year. And uh, it's only it's only 28 bucks. And if you're going to if you're new to all this and you buy a domain, buy the domain privacy plus protection because what's that going to do? It's going to stop people from doing a, a who is search for a certain website and looking at your phone number and constantly giving you cold calls for how to set up a website or yeah. something. It drives me insane. Yeah. You know, yeah. I wouldn't less so, hard way. So why, why are we, why are we going on? Why are we attacking this at the low level? Why don't we just go from high level straight from the beginning instead of making a website selling canned air, Make a website for a marketplace for selling canned air. We create the marketplace for users to sign up, can their air. If their air is in a fresh location, then we need to audit their air, make sure it is it is good, or it, if it's not, they just won't become a verified seller or whatnot. And then like it's like eBay for air. I don't know that the demand is there yet, it, it, but that's actually pretty cool. I really like that idea. I think that's wild. All right, Beth and Newport. See, these guys are selling canned air, like pressurized air. Yeah, I'm, there's there's totally something for pressurized air. Yep, absolutely. There we go. That's exactly what I imagined. Them filling up the pressurized air at the back of a truck in Alaska or something, it looks like. 
Yeah, but that might be for scuba divers or something. No, it's it's a it's just canned air. It's pressurized air that is fresh, like like a can of Lysol without any chemicals or anything, and they just pump air into it, and then put a cap on it and a little cone to breathe into. What is that? Two chains samples, ten thousand dollar air in a can. Where do you um? Sorry, I'm I'm adding this on. Right this has now. been a trend for a while. Okay, I absolutely love it. And a lot of these are for athletes training and if you're at high altitude on a mountain. But oh, okay. you could also do it for fresh air in general, I guess, you know? This is absolutely wild. I hope this is a signing right now. Because, you know, if someone was in China, I understand the aspect of someone wanting a breath of fresh air from a specific location, like by the ocean or some, whatnot, for the smells and... Stuff that you get over there, but what would stop them from buying a bottle, of, like a bottle of compressed air? That's like that. No, they I, know is really good quality. I didn't filtered. think about it in the beginning, but and like if they live in a area where they really just want a breath of fresh air, like they don't care what it smells like, they just want it to be fresh because this actually turns into a real thing. <laughs> because you can't, you literally, you can't get that air in that area. I mean, you can filter uh, it. A lot of a lot of smog in China. Yeah. In certain areas, I guess. You know? I'm trying to find the... My mind's kind of going a million miles a minute thinking about this. Like the, the, the jars. I'm just thinking about using mason jars, and like now I actually can. like the, the can air, the can spray. What is going on? Is this thing... Is, okay, I just signed it. I like the mason jar, too. I, I love that idea. I, I guess just to, to try it, see the... See I'm what trying happens. to find where people are selling the can jars of air. Where did you find that? What do you mean? Where did I find it? The woman that found the the woman that did it in England or the UK? I just Googled it. I okay, find one fifteen per bottle. Wow, this is on CNN, but one hundred fifteen per bottle. Yeah, but the bottle alone that holds it might be something too. It's added on, so I'll be working on that later. And I can't believe we're actually going to do this. I love. Yep. These. Here we go. I found the one. Oh, what? Where they sell it to China? Uh, Melanie and Francesca. Yes. Harvest air, Har fresh air from English countryside. Bottle it and sell it to smog choked China. Outstanding. Sold over 100 bottles so far. Yeah, but one was They're also selling them for 115. Oh my gosh. That's why I'm saying. You were really worried about. I don't want to do that though. Like, it doesn't cost that much. You can't. To ship a bottle, the dystopian the, business of bottled air. Yeah, that's why I'm worried about this. I don't want to be like an air farmer. But I kind of do. It's kind of cool. Wow. I can't believe that. So, check out Breath of Fresh Air by the time you hear this. See if oh, yeah. Live. Breath of Fresh Air. And we'll let you know next week if we actually got any orders. Oh, I see a calculation here. How much would it cost to constantly breathe bottled air? So, the most expensive air can is 160 breaths. That's the pressurized can I'm talking about. Wow. So, you get 160. And that's pretty good. Cost, 32. Cost per breath, 20 cents. Average person is 16 breaths per minute, so the cost per minute is $2.30. The cost per day is $4,000, and the cost per year is $1,600,000. Yeah, I don't think we're going to go that crazy. No, I just want to... Unless it's free shipping, See, in which case, uh, I know shipping to like Australia in a medium flat rate box is, I want to say, 58 60 bucks. So, I mean, that's a lot of money. Oh, so it's going to be kind of expensive. Yeah, shipping is going to be, if it's free shipping. So maybe but we if should. you do it cheaper. What if we do it in a bag? Like a Ziploc? No, like something better, but yeah, a plastic bag. Um, And make it the uh, size think, of the box. I think the plastic. The plastic's It might, problem. yeah, plastic's it might. Problem. I was like, okay, so glass jar. They yeah. can have a smell, though, the glass jars, when you get them out of the package. Oh, well, you'd have to. Uh, clean them i guess yeah and, uh, we'll figure that out yeah we'll clean it with no alcohol. it'll it'll smell like clean it with alcohol. it's gonna be good now would you want to do alcohol yeah because that evaporates yeah no but doesn't that leave a 99 <laughs> percent you're the man i love this style i can't believe we're actually Not trying ID. we're just gonna do this every time we're gonna come up with a crazy idea mid podcast we're gonna yes. find the domain we're gonna do it so, hey okay, guys check it out it's already up three days later We'll rock on. So right. I'll buy the jars. Hi, I think that's a good place to end it. Do we have anything else to mention? I mean, we're at an hour 27. I don't think we do. I'm pretty happy about this. If you want to get in contact with us, you can email us at 
uh, mark at coffeemilk.co. You can reach me at mitch.coffeemilk.co. If you got any ideas of things you want to do or if you have any questions, just email us, let us know, yeah. and we'll try and address each yeah, and every one of them on the pod. Definitely send in any emails with ideas, suggestions, or things you think we should change. We want to hear from you guys and what you want, so let us know. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Coffee Milk. Over and out. <laughs> Thanks. See you next week. Breath of fresh air. <laughs>